guys, so this is going to be a little different from my usual skincare trials. For the past two weeks, I have been on the quest for affordable dupes. It's been a bit of an interesting journey. I have this giant box in front of me with 28, 29 products in it to talk to you about, but we're going to be talking about them in the sense of dupes. So what I've been doing for the past two weeks is kind of going back and forth between the product that I think the drugstore item is duping, the original, the high-end product, and the drugstore to do some comparisons. And kind of beyond that, if it looks like my skin is getting better, I've been doing my own night routine, the products that I know and believe in. So my TLC Framboose on this side of my face, I'm finally clearing up these scars. I finally have mostly cleared up the breakouts over here after that really harsh trial that I did. So I didn't really feel like a before and after would be a very helpful format for this type of video. Instead, I'm just gonna go through all the products and tell you my thoughts. And what I'm gonna do is rate these as far as whether I think yes, they're a dupe, no, they're not a dupe, or they're sort of a dupe. Now, I ended up picking two products from every brand so that if I really didn't like one product, it wouldn't make me too negative towards the brand. I know myself, so I felt that was an important factor for me personally. So, okay, we got the information out of the way. Let's go ahead and dig in. So I'm gonna kick this off with some Pacifica scrubs. I actually discovered these so long ago that they're almost empty tubes at this point, but I definitely do wanna talk about them. We'll start off with this Glow Baby Youth Salvation Walnut Scrub. This retails for $14 for 1.7 ounces, and yes, it is a dupe for the Ole Henriksen Transforming Walnut Scrub, which is $28 for three ounces. My only kind of problem with that statement is if you break down the math on it, this isn't that much better of a deal. However, it's a drugstore brand, so you can definitely get more deals with it. You know, if you buy it through Ulta, that you can use the 350 off 15 coupons or the better coupons they sometimes send out. It goes one, buy one, get one free, that type of deal. Buy one, get one 50% off is really the way they do it. But in terms of texture, it is, it's pretty much the exact same thing. I don't know about everybody's thoughts on walnut scrubs. I think that they can be a little harsh, but just in terms of the dupe itself, yes, I call this a dupe. Now for one, I like better and I definitely feel more comfortable recommending because it's certainly not as harsh. We have the Pacifica Rice Bright Skin Luminizing Smoothing Paste, which is 2.5 ounces for $14. Yes, this is a dupe for the Origins Modern Friction. Modern Friction is $21 for 1.7 ounces and both of them contain little fragments of rice as well as a lemon scent. They're both really enjoyable to use. Gently exfoliate without being too hard. I really like both products a lot, and yes, you can save a little bit of money by going with the Pacifica. Next up, we have the Yes2 Tomatoes Clear Skin for Acne with Salicylic Acid Acne Fighting Micellar Cleansing Water. This retails for $8.99 for 7.77 fluid ounces, a little bit of an odd quantity there. I feel like a lot of people are not going to agree with me on this, so I'm kind of going with a bit of a neutral ground, but I'm going to call it sort of a dupe for the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA Liquid. So these are completely different products. One is kind of more of a toner and the other is a micellar cleansing water, your all-in-one cleanse. But the reason I'm saying kind of is because I actually saw kind of similar results from them, which isn't something I expected. When I first bought this, I was just hoping for a better micellar water, but I really have been impressed with how much it's helped me prevent breakouts. And another reason a lot of people aren't gonna agree with me here is because this is a 2% salicylic acid product, and this one is only 0.5%, but something I said uh, in the Murad video that I did is that I really realized I don't necessarily need 2%. It seems that if I use a very low concentration of salicylic acid, it's enough for me, for me, to fight breakouts. I just need to get it in there somewhere. For me, this was a great find. There's definitely a lot of people who are not gonna love it. This formula does contain al denatured alcohol. It does have witch hazel and it. it has a lot of the things that Paula herself would not put in her product, but you know, this is, skincare is always, it's always YMMV, so I like this. It's a lot of money saved. This one is $29 for four ounces, and again, this one is $8.99 for 7.77. So maybe other people will find it to be a dupe and maybe other people will completely disagree with me, but for me, I'm happy I found it. Next up, I have the Yes2 Coconut 
hydrate and restore cleansing wipes. I was hoping these might be a dupe for kind of my favorite cleansing wipes, which are the Ole Henriksen cloths in general, but in particular the So Nurturing cleansing cloths, which are their hydrating cleansing cloths. Those retail for $15 for $30, and this is $5.99 for $30. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say no. Even though I do agree that these have some hydrating ingredients, to me I felt like these were a lot drier in texture, and that's, that's something I really don't like in cleansing wipes. Now a quick disclaimer, I'm not 100% sure that that isn't because I let them sit for too long. And it's kind of why I have this inner conflict with cleansing wipes as a whole, especially in these 30 packs. We should never rely on these. It should be for in a pinch, but if you're buying a pack of 30 at a time, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like, oh, I need to get through them. And I just kind of feel like I end up justifying, oh, I'll just wipe my face with the cleansing wipe instead of wash my face. I don't know, I have a little bit of complicated thoughts. I also don't think that you need to spend a lot of money on wipes in general. So I'm always gonna say a micellar water and a cleansing pad is a better option than something like this, and it's cheaper in the long run. But I don't hate these, I just I just don't think they're a dupe for the Ole Henriksen. All right, let's talk about some Garnier products next. I do wanna start with the micellar water. So I have, well I had the travel size of both the Garnier and the Bioderma. The Garnier micellar cleansing water retails for $3.99 for 3.4 ounces, and the Bioderma Sensibio H2O retails for $6.90 for the same amount. While I do feel like this is a dupe, I'm actually gonna default to saying sort of. And the sole reason for that is that when you go in to read the reviews on the Garnier version, there are a lot of people who report correlations with breakouts. I can't say that I've seen that, but it seems that in general there are a lot more people who feel this works with their skin. And at the end of the day, I don't think that's a big enough price difference to be trying to use this if it does cause you to break out. Total little side note here, but the most recent one of these that I finished off was the waterproof, and I didn't see any difference in it, personally. Uh, but I do like it. I do think I like the Yes2 Tomatoes micellar cleansing water a lot more. But yeah, my final answer is gonna, it's still gonna be sort of, which I think is exactly what it was last time we talked about those two. I also tried out the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Balm. This one gets called a dupe for the Clinique Moisture Surge gel a lot. Garnier's version is $16.99 for 1.7 ounces, and Clinique's Moisture Surge is $39 for 1.7 ounces. I'm gonna say sort of, but I completely get where everybody is coming from with that statement. I've talked before about how skincare is one of those difficult to figure out how to dupe topics. And this, the deal with this product is that its texture is pretty much exactly the same as Clinique's Moisture Surge, but texture is only a tiny component of how skincare performs. While they feel the exact same on the skin. Clinique's is fragrance-free and it's alcohol-free, but it does contain urea. Kind of pick whichever you are more comfortable with there. Both have hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and silicones. Uh, there's peptides in the Clinique, and then there's ceramides in the Garnier. And they are kind of accomplishing the same end goal with completely different ingredients, so sort of. All right, I got some stuff from the Bliss brand to talk about. I talked about them recently. I'm really excited about their new price range. They're com they've completely revamped as a brand. Apparently, they got some assistance with their with a marketing manager and they told them your prices are too high. And because of it, they've ended up releasing completely new formulas. So this is the Makeup Melt. It is $10 for four ounces, and it is supposed to be a never greasy eye makeup remover gel. I was hoping that would be a dupe for the Bobbi Brown Instant Long Wear Makeup Remover, which is $30 for 3.4 ounces. I'm gonna have to say no, and I'll regret buying this. This doesn't work at all. Not at all. And I kind of blame myself to some extent because I bought this when it had a five-star review and one five-star review. That's a bad sign. I feel that the first review of a product is either a one-star or a five-star review. It's, it's, ne it's, 
and nobody ever leaves a four star review for the initial review. And if it's a five star, it could be a fake review. If it's a one star, it's somebody complaining that it's sold out. Anyway, since I purchased this, two more reviews have gone up at two and three stars. I'd give it one star because I don't think it does anything. So that was a waste of $10 and I'm glad that I got a free list of product with it because otherwise I probably would have gotten mad at the brand. But I did end up trying their Drench and Quench Cream to Water Hydrator, which retails for $20 for 1.7 ounces. And on this one, I'm gonna say yes. This is a dupe for the Peter Thomas Roth Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Cream which is $52 for 1.7 ounces. Now coming back to talking about texture, this is that same very lightweight cream to water type of texture that's been almost trending. It's also similar in texture to the Tatcha water cream. And you know, that's the, that's the texture that every one of these water-based creams has been aiming for. So they got it in a $20 formula. So both of them have the same glycerin cyclopenicilloxone base, which is a silicone. I, I think the silicone is a lot of what is giving it its feel. You know, I think these work really well under makeup and I think that's why they're so popular. If you've ever had that experience of using a heavier moisturizer immediately before you apply makeup, then you probably already know that some of these creams can really betray your makeup application. You get these little balls of something all over your skin, you gotta flake them away. It kind of destroys your whole makeup. I suspect the reason that all these moisturizers, all the water-based moisturizers are trending is because, because people really appreciate that it doesn't mess up their makeup. It kind of acts more as a primer than anything else. Now in fairness, there are more skin beneficial ingredients in the Peter Thomas Roth version, but kind of when it comes down to it, I think that this will suffice for a lot of younger people and I, I suspect that's the target audience for this type of a product. So yes, my final answer is that's a dupe. I've got a couple of Body Shop products to talk about and I know these are a little bit more expensive than the rest of the products, but I thought I'd just toss them in here for the sake of our conversation today. First off, I have the Revitalizing Facial Oil, which is $39 for an ounce. I'm gonna say that this one is sort of a dupe for the Bobbi Brown Extra Face Oil, which is $67 for an ounce. There really are a lot of similarities in the formula here, but Body Shop cut the cost of theirs by using a base of mixed triester, which is coconut oil and glycerin, and just a, a less expensive ingredient overall. So in some ways, I think that the prices of these are actually, they're actually kind of fair, all things taken into consideration. But then I have the Drops of Youth Youth Concentrate, which is $54 for 1.7 ounces. I was really surprised by that price. I know it's Body Shop and I know they're approaching mid-range, but whoa. However, I'm gonna say it's a dupe for another product and that is, get ready for it, the Shiseido Ultimate Power Infusing Concentrate, which is $97 for 1.6 ounces and I recommend neither of them. Both of these have the same concept of being an enhancer for your other serums. They're kind of this open-ended product where you just kind of put it on your face and everything else is supposed to work better. They both have that exact same water, glycerin, and denatured alcohol base, and really it's the denatured alcohol that is doing the enhanced absorption of your serums. Oh my goodness, you could replicate that if you really want to at Walmart for 97 cents. So no, I don't recommend either one of these. I think that this whole idea of a penetration enhancer is, it's unnecessary. Let's move on to talking about some number seven serums. Now I've heard a lot of good things about number seven serums. And in particular, when it comes to serum, that is a very important part of my skincare routine. I, I need my treatment to be very powerful. And that's why I've been a little cautious of drugstore formulas, but these came so highly recommended that I thought I would give them a go, and I'm happy to report I have some good findings here. First off, we have the Restore and Renew Face and Neck Serum. This is $33.99 for one ounce. I'm gonna say, it's sort of a dupe for the Peter Thomas Roth Unwrinkle Turbo Serum. This retails for $150 for an ounce, which is absolutely silly. But both of these do contain peptides. They contain retinol palmitate, which is that kind of more gentle form of retinol, which is also in the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. This isn't very similar to that product though, but it is more similar to this. One major difference is that the Peter Thomas Roth formula has a much higher alcohol formula. So at the end of the day, 
I like the $33.99 one much more. And I definitely do think that in terms of texture, they're similar, but for what that's worth, if you ask me, a lot of serums are similar in texture to each other. So that brings us to the number seven Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Serum. This one is $29.99 for an ounce. On this one, I say yes, it is a dupe for Clinique's Repairwear Laser Focus, which is $49 for an ounce. Both of these are trying to do the same thing. They kind of have these smooths, restores, corrects. I mean, laser wear, it's kind of implied. This one tells you that it will smooth wrinkles within, I think they say two to four weeks. And both of them do have peptides to back that up, as well as antioxidants, as well as hyaluronic acid. They actually have a very similar base formula. They're both fragrance-free, and for the record, this was the only fragrance-free number seven serum that I could find. Clinique's whole line is, of course, fragrance-free. One difference that I think some people will be interested in, but not everybody is that number seven does use parabens in their products and Clinique does not. So it's kind of a, a lot of when we're talking about drugstore dupes comes down to what you are comfortable with in your products. In general, a lot of the kind of feared ingredients tend to be cheaper. But my advice to you would be to not necessarily take that as a this is something to avoid. Do your research, but you know, come to your own conclusions and whatever it is. Stand by your conclusions. All right, we're gonna end this video with some products from The Ordinary and just kind of imagine that there hasn't been a ton of drama going on. Y'all know I really wanted to try the lactic acid 10% with hyaluronic acid, which is $6.79 for an ounce and compare it to Sunday Riley's Good Jeans. This comparison, so many people have done this, so many people have drawn their own conclusions and what I'm gonna say on it Sunday Riley's Good Jeans is $105 for an ounce, and as much as I want this to be a dupe, I don't think it is. I think the magic of Good Jeans is its formula. It, you know, it contains lactic acid, but to me, it, it's kind of like saying chocolate chips are a dupe for Godiva candies. Yeah, there's chocolate in Godiva, but there's also a lot more. <laughs> There's a lot more in good jeans. And it's just a really, really good formula. But all that said, don't be too discouraged if you don't want to pay the price tag for Sunday Riley's Good Jeans, because in my personal, in my personal opinion, I liked it, but I didn't ever feel like I need to buy it. Still don't. I, I still think it's a great product, but I think that if you have a really good skincare routine that you can make from drugstore products. I think that you can reach a point where you, you really don't need it. Now the Ordinary is lactic acid, and I do have the 10% one, there is a 5% one. I do like this as well, but for a completely different, completely different reason that kind of came out of left field. I've actually been meaning to talk about this somewhere, different ways to use AHAs, uh, but I, I did an experiment on myself. I wanted to see if using a lower concentration of lactic acid on stretch marks could actually kind of come close to the results of a stronger lactic acid peel. So, you know, people do get lactic acid peels on stretch marks. They're usually at, I think it's like 25 to 30% concentration. Well, I said, what if I use a 10% for two weeks in a row? Um, I highly recommend doing that. In fairness, I don't have bad stretch marks, but I now no longer have any. So, uh, thanks, Brandon. So yeah, that is a use that I actually haven't heard anybody talk about. I just, I had this random idea one day. I don't know if other people have thought about this. I'm sure somebody has. I'm sure I'm not the only one to think of this. But I really, I really recommend that. And you know, this is $6.79 for an ounce. And that's all that it took me to get there, so. Oh, Brandon, please address your issues so we can continue to support your brand. Ugh. And then I'm going to end this with the Ordinary's 100% plant-derived squalane. This is $7.90 for an ounce, and I just, there is no way that I cannot say, yes, this is a dupe for the Biosans 100% squalane oil. Did I just say that really southern? I think I did. Anyway, the ingredient on both of them is 100% plant-based squalane. Now they may have used different processes to get here, they may have used different initial ingredients, who knows, but the end result is it's the, it's the same ingredient. So it's really hard for me to pretend it's not a dupe. You know, that's basically the definition of a dupe. So uh, the Biosense is $58 for 3.4 ounces, this is $7.90 for one ounce. 
So yeah, for me, I'm gonna say it's a dupe. I do think that squalene doesn't have to be an expensive ingredient. I've kind of wondered for a while why Biosense has theirs for so much money. If anybody has had more experience and you do think that it is significantly different from this, please comment below and let me know your experience because I've just kind of been stumped on this for a while. But I think I also kind of get it because I do think that, for example, the Josie Moran argan oil is better than the Physician's Formula argan oil. But I'm probably still gonna keep buying the Physician's Formula just because that price difference is so massive. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want me to look into any other dupes, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, YouTube.